Not so long ago, a museum in any city contained a lot of Greek torsos with broken arms and a lot of Roman coins of emperors with broken noses. Then a little later they brought in plants and butterflies. But today the great thing is the science museum, or it ought to be, but not enough cities have them. So Omnibus invited into the studio this afternoon some children from such places, St. Louis, Baltimore, Houston, Milwaukee, and nearby Westchester County, to put on a science program for them in the hope that it would excite them enough so they'd go home and holler to have a science museum in their own community. And to pilot this pilot project, we called in a man who always seems to stay one jump ahead of most science, Dr. Seuss. He was the man who uh, invented the character of the boy with the electronic voice, Gerald McBoing Boing. <laughs> and also an improbable zoo, McGrew's Zoo, that is. and an ingenious alphabet of 26 letters that starts after Z. So we've asked Dr. Seuss to build a modern museum as he thinks it ought to be. Dr. Seuss, bring on your museum. I'd like to start with a uh, little dust. That's what I've been drawing here. Dust, D-U-S-T, dust. Because dust was what first got me interested in building the museum I'm gonna show you today. You see, when I was a boy way back in the town of South Anthrax, had a little old natural history museum, and it featured mostly just plain dust. Lots and lots of old-fashioned dust. Dust and droopy dead things. They had a very dead bird with a stuffing falling out, and on him was a sign that said, don't touch. When they had a little more dust, you'd come to a bottle containing one very dead jellyfish. There were cobwebs in the bottle, and then a sign that said, don't touch. Then a little more dust, and you'd come to the museum guard. He wasn't dead, but awfully close to it. And he stood there, scarcely breathing, next to a sign that said, don't touch, as if anybody would want to. All anybody wanted to do was to get out of the place just as fast as he could. And all this dustiness and all this deadness got me so all darn mad that I decided, if I ever grew up, someday I'd do something about building a museum the way it should be built, not just a Natural History Museum, a museum with all the sciences under one roof. And if you follow me out of this musty hole, I think we can do something about that right now. From here on, you won't see any uh, don't touch signs at all. You'll see only signs like these, do touch, please handle, push, pull. It's your world we'll show you in this museum, and the closer you can get to the wonders of science, the better you'll see how you, as a human being, fit into the picture. And in my museum, you'll learn while having fun. Because the more fun you have, the more you'll remember. Suppose you're interested in sparks. The button says push. Go ahead, push it. This is what 15,000 volts will do. Now push that button. Maybe you like machinery. You'll see how every kind of gear under the sun works. Even the square ones. Or maybe you're hankering to go to the moon. Want to know how much you weigh on the moon? Only 13 pounds, one-sixth of his earth weight. Now he wants to know why, and we'll tell him. Want to know about magnetism? You can start by playing with powerful magnets. Come on, Stevie, let's see you pull that nail through. As you can see, you won't have to take anyone's word for anything. You can try it for yourself. You can learn about things by doing things with things. Now, you might think these young people are just fooling around, playing a game with a bucket full of sand. Well, they are, but they're also tangling with physics. They're learning the principle of simple harmonic motion. If 
Funny thing about this, all these round shapes wind up as rectangles. As an introduction to sound, you can talk into this telephone and then they hear a strange voice played back. Uh, Your own. I'm visiting a science museum and I'm listening to my own voice. This is how it sounds. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought onto this continent a new nation. Hello, this is Holly Knox. I'm visiting a science museum and I'm listening to my own voice. This is how it sounds. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought onto this continent a new nation. Hello, this is Bobby Sodak. I'm listening to my own voice in the Museum of Science. Now, back in the old museum when they, in the town of South Anthrax, when they wanted to explain something like this, an electrical motor, they'd import from somewhere in the vicinity of the Dead Sea an expert called a gargle snargler. This gargle snargler would uh, take about 10,000 50-syllable words, and he'd gargle them up and snargle them up, and they'd write them down here on what is known as a gargle sheet. In such small type that nobody could possibly... In my new museum, we explain electricity differently. This machine is called the Van de Graaff Electrostatic Generator. Well, that sounds like an awful big name for such a small machine, but with it, we can generate about a quarter of a million volts of static electricity. Well, static electricity is the same kind of electricity you get from well, scuffing your feet across the rug and then touching someone and getting a little spark. Or maybe if you've ever brushed your hair and then made your hair stand on end next to the brush. That's also static electricity. Of course, lightning is static electricity in the cloud. Now, I'd like to point out one thing before we go further. This is not the same kind of electricity you have in your home. So don't try any of these experiments at home. I can actually put my hand right on this dome and take the ball away. And now the electricity is gathering on my body the same way as it gathers on the dome. Of course, you can't see it and I can't feel it, but it's there. I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll hold my hand out. You reach up gently and touch my hand and get ready to jump a little bit. Come on over and touch my hand a little bit. There. You want to try it? Come ahead. Just one. There you go. Fine. Now, to get my hand down off the dome, all I have to do is put this ball back up. As soon as the ball touches the dome, then I can take my hand on or off without any trouble at all. Now, maybe you've heard stories of people that uh, well, made their hair stand on end with this type of machine. As I used to be able to do it very well before I went to the barbers, now I do it naturally. Uh, let's use this Davy Crockett cap. Now, when there's no hat on the dome, the electricity can't make up its mind where to jump from. So it always jumps directly over to the ball. When we put the hat up there, each individual hair gives the electricity an opportunity to get off of the dome. When we do this, the hairs stand right up on end. 